thank you all for coming here today. I did these sessions um, because of the questionnaire that I sent out, and a lot of people said that they want to know about different veterans benefits that are available to them. So today's class is going to be an overview of some veterans benefits. So we're going to be talking a little bit about some of the federal benefits that are available through the VA, some a little bit of the state benefits that are available obviously through Massachusetts. Everybody here live in Massachusetts? Okay, because I do sometimes get Rhode Island uh, veterans. Um, local benefits, that's Westport, it's really just one right now. Um, and then some miscellaneous benefits, and that is going to be a little bit more in detail. So, whoop, what happened? So, federal benefits, what we're going to cover today is some burial benefits, VA health care, disability compensation, service connected pension, and survivor benefits. And again, this is a brief overview. Each of these topics will be covered in greater detail on the dates that are over there on the side. Um, so next week is burial benefits. Um, there's a ton of information about that. So if you haven't signed up and you're interested in that, please definitely sign up for that class. Um, okay, question for all of you. Is it a truth or myth that the VA will pay for the burial cost for anyone who is a veteran? Myth. Myth. Anybody else? Michelle is right. It's a myth. Unfortunately, it's a myth. The VA will not pay for the entire burial cost of anybody who served this country. Otherwise, we would go broke. We're already broke. So, what will the VA pay? <laughs> so, the, the VA will, can pay a burial in or plot allowance for eligible veterans. And again, I'm going to go over this in more detail next week, but I just will say an eligible veteran is somebody for the for the most part who is receiving some type of a monetary benefit from the VA, whether it's disability or whether it's pension. There are some other categories as well. We'll go into that next week, but those are the two big ones. So the VA will also provide a headstone or a grave marker, otherwise known as a foot marker, or a niche marker. So if uh, if you're going to be cremated and your remains will go into like a, a columbarium wall, they can provide a niche marker for, for veterans. Now that, you do not have to be receiving a benefit. You, can, you just have to be an eligible veteran. Um, and we'll get into that next week. And then the VA will also provide memorial certificates signed by whoever happens to be the president at the time that they are requested. I know that that is important for some people. Um, and I say signed because it's not really, it's, the president's not really signing all of them. And they will give you as many copies as you want. If you want to give one to all of your children, all of your grandchildren, all of your great-grandchildren, you can request 15, 20, whatever. They will send them to you, and there's no cost for that. Um, so next week, what I want to also be covering is the cemeteries that, uh, some of this is just Westport. And then the state and the federal is for veteran, anybody who's a veteran who lives in Massachusetts. So I'll be talking a little bit next week about the eligibility for Beach Grove Cemetery, the veteran section, the two state cemeteries, which is in, do you have a seat for him? This one right there. Where? Okay. Um, in Winchenden and Agawam, those are far from here, so I'm probably not going to cover too much about that. And then um, the federal cemetery, which is Bourne, or some, some of you call it Otis, uh, but that's the VA cemetery. So that will all be next week. So again, this is brief. Um, okay, so the next topic, VA health care. So again, not every veteran, unfortunately, is eligible for VA health care. There are certain qualifying criteria if you meet even one of that criteria, you would qualify for VA healthcare regardless of your income. If you don't meet any of those qualifying criteria, then your income is gonna be considered for eligibility for VA healthcare. So I can tell you for this area, the income limit for a single veteran is $60,445. That's this, this year's rate. So if your income falls below that, you will qualify for VA health care. You will have co-pays. But again, all of this, I'm going to go into a lot more detail on October 14th. So if you are interested in that, 
sign up. So the qualifying criteria, I will just tell you quickly, is that you are receiving disability compensation. So you have at least a 10% service-connected disability or higher, you automatically qualify for VA health care. If you are receiving VA pension, not military pension, but VA pension, which is a low-income benefit, you would qualify for VA health care. If you were discharged from the military because of a disability that happened to you in the service or got worse because of your service, you qualify. Um, if you're a former POW, if you received a Purple Heart or the Medal of Honor, if you get or qualify for Mass Health, um, if you served in Vietnam between January 9th, 1962, and May 7th, 1975. Now, I'm gonna add to that that I just found out yesterday. The PACT Act, everybody know what the PACT Act is? So it's new legislation that just passed on August 10th of this year. It expands eligibility for health care to veterans who were exposed to Agent Orange in Guam, American Samoa, uh, Thailand, um, the Johnson Atoll, there's a few other places. So starting October 1st, tomorrow, if you qualify as, as being exposed in one of those places, you will also qualify for VA health care, regardless of your income. Um, served in Southwest Asia between, this might only affect a couple of you, August 2nd, 1990 and November 11th, 1998, or, and this is a big one, served at Camp Lejeune, North Carolina, or any of the little satellite, Camp Johnson, Camp Geiger, or Marine Corps Air Station, New River, so the Marine bases, between August 1st, 1953, and December 31st, 1987. So those are the qualifying criteria if you meet that, you're automatically eligible for VA health care, regardless of what your income is. All right. Any questions about that? I know there's a lot of information. No. Okay. All right. Next one. VA disability compensation. I do a ton of these claims. A ton of them. So, what is VA disability compensation? So, it's a monthly tax-free monetary benefit that is payable to the veteran only. And I say that because if a veteran is getting disability and the veteran passes away, that benefit does not go to the surviving spouse. And we'll talk more about survivor benefits later. Um, and you do have to be rated 10% or more. So there is such a thing as 0% service connected it just means that you have a disability that happened when you were in the military, but it's not to a degree that the VA is going to give you money because they, they, they feel like it uh, impacts your ability to work. Um, so, you can file claims for, you can file a claim for anything you want. It doesn't mean that the VA is going to award it. But, what they will look at is that you incurred an injury or an illness while you were serving on active duty or active duty for training if you were in the reserves um, or your military service made your existing condition worse, right? So let's say before you went in the military, you had headaches, um, but they weren't bad. You went in the military, you were exposed to whatever it was, burn pits or just jet fuel, whatever, and whatever something triggered your headache, now they're more severe, they're more frequent, Whatever. So basically your military service made that condition worse. Or, and this is where most of you this applies to, an illness that occurred after service from an exposure during service. What am I talking about? Agent Orange. Burn pits if you served in Iraq, Afghanistan, Djibouti, Africa, all kinds of places. Um, so just because you didn't have prostate cancer when you were in the military, but you served during Vietnam, you were exposed to Agent Orange, 30, 40, 50 years later, you're diagnosed with prostate cancer, that's an illness that occurred after service because of your service. You can file a disability claim for that. Um, they do cover physical and mental health conditions. PTSD is a big one. I'm sure a lot of veterans in here have um, disability claims for PTSD. Um, 
And then the, next, the last thing I want to cover about disability, and again, we will cover this more in more detail on October 21st. We're, we, we will talk about presumptive conditions and all kinds of stuff on, on October 21st. But if you are receiving service-connected disability of at least 30% and you're married or you have minor dependent children, the VA will pay you a small additional amount each month to pay the veteran, not the spouse or the child. Um, it ranges from I don't know, anywhere like 50, 75 bucks to like a little over $100. Um, so if you are 30% service connected or more and you're not getting that additional benefit, please come see me with your marriage certificate and any previous marriage history. Um, when you got married, where you got married, who you got married to, when the, the marriage ended, how it ended, and where it ended. That's the information that we need for any previous marriages. Um, okay, questions about disability. Claude. When does the Chancellor Jones thing come in on this? You know, there's always lawyers advertising. Yeah. <laughs> advertising so is there a, a government center, you know, so you don't have to go and Yeah. yeah, so all of these attorneys, all right, so let me back up a minute and say, in general, you cannot sue the government, right? The PACT Act made it so that if you served at Camp Lejeune for 30 or more days and you have an illness from that service, you cannot sue the government. So all these attorneys are jumping on the bandwagon because they want money, right? So. Is there you, an alternative to suing the government? I, I just hate to make lawyers with this. So but is there a government agency that you can go to directly and save the government all that money? Well, yeah, so so there's, there is a, a lawsuit that you can file through the Navy Judge Advocate General's office. So you are suing the government, but you're suing it through the Navy JAG and not through, I'm not going to, call out any law firms by name. I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. um, but you, you know, you, instead of going through a lawyer where they're going to take 20 to 40 percent of whatever settlement you receive. Mm -hmm. So you can go through like the Navy JAG and file a claim. I have those forms available. I can get you one. I can email it or print it out, whatever. I will say if you're getting the VA benefit for any of the conditions from Camp Lejeune, it will offset any settlement that you get through this Navy JAG or through a law firm. Um, if you go through a law firm, the law firm is basically gonna take more money because if you have um, you know, lung cancer is one of the presumptives. If you have lung cancer from your service at Camp Lejeune and you're getting 100% service-connected disability, so over $3,000 a month, you're talking you know, maybe for a year, what's that, $36,000, almost $40,000? the lawyer is gonna take that money because they're gonna say, you can't double dip. You can't get VA disability and not, get, what's that? I don't think that's true. Yeah, that's what everything that I've been being told, that's what they're gonna do. I'm in the middle of a lawsuit. Okay, yeah. And the suit is against the, the chemical company, but the dry cleaners. Like okay. It's, everybody's suing different yeah. people. Yeah. And nowhere in the paperwork or was it discussed, not that we have a lot of conversation, uh -huh. right. uh, they're going to take their percent, and yeah. it's usually 45%. It's a lot. Right, it's but a lot. But you still get something that you wouldn't have gotten. Yeah, that's just, true. But it doesn't affect, it does not affect it, his, dis it, his disability. Percent. It's not going to affect your disability. They're not going to take away your disability. But from what I was told is that any disability that you have received up to that point you're not gonna get. So basically, that's gonna come out of your settlement. That's what I was told. I don't understand what you mean. So if you get a set, if say the, the settlement is $100,000, and you've already received disability for $40,000, so the lawyer's gonna take their, whatever their percentage is, off of the $100,000, and then they're gonna, from what I was told, they're gonna also hold, keep that the 40,000 that you've gotten in disability payments. Because right. if it's coming from the government, if the government is paying that money out, 
because you can't get VA disability from the government and a lawsuit from the government. Now, if they're suing right, the chemical, if they're suing the dry cleaning company. Most of the lawsuits company, are not from the government, though, yeah. if you pay attention. They're so, all for third party. Okay. Okay. That's so, what made me, I wanted to know yeah. what you meant by that. I mean, that's the first I've heard about it being third party. I and get that. that. Be, yeah. The government's paying these Right. Guys. Yeah. So if it is third party, like mesothelioma, all those claims, they're going after the companies that made the asbestos. They're not going after the government. Right. So it's probably a similar thing. And that's thing. what most of the, so the ones you see on TV yeah. every three minutes, which is <laughs> absurd, yeah. they're all for something else, yeah. not okay. the government. Okay. And, and that might very well be true. Okay. There's been very little information put out about it. Okay. Um, I was hoping I could have done a webinar on it yesterday, but I was here setting up at the same time, so I couldn't okay. do it. Um, but thank you I for that. Because I wanted to know what you meant by they take back what you Yeah, that yeah. Was if government. it's from the government, if your settlement is from the government, sorry, it's ringing in my ear. <laughs> if the settlement is from the government and you're getting disability from the government, you're sense. double dipping. You can't do that. Claude, did that answer your question, kind of? Yeah. Okay, all right. Um, any other questions about disability? So the next one is non-service connected pension. So this is exactly what it says. You do not have to have a service connected disability to qualify for this. And in fact, you, if you are getting disability compensation, you cannot also get pension. Again, you're double dipping. So if you qualify for both benefits, the VA is gonna pay you the higher of the two. If you're over 30% service connected for a veteran, your disability is gonna be higher than any pension that you receive. So, um, but just to kind of go over what this is, and it's a monthly tax-free, anything from the VA is tax-free, monetary benefit for low-income veterans. That's who this is designed to help. So you have to fall below yearly income and asset limits. The asset limit goes up every year, so this calendar year is $138,489. That does not include your residence, unless your residence is on more than two acres of land, and then the acreage over the two acres that can be built upon is considered an asset. Again, I'm gonna go over all of this in more detail on October 28th. Um, but I will say for a, well, before I get into the income limits, let me finish the rest. Okay, so this benefit, is specific to wartime veterans. So if you only serve during peacetime, at this point, you will not qualify for this benefit. Um, I really wish the VA would change that, or not the VA, that really would be an act of Congress to change that. Um, but you have, the veteran had to have served at least 90 days on active duty with at least one of those days during a qualifying wartime period. World War II, Korea, Vietnam. Um, they haven't really established for Gulf War and post 9-11 yet <coughs> because you kind of have to be over 65 to get this benefit. And if you served uh, during the Desert Storm or post 9-11, you're probably not over 65 yet, unless you were at the tail end of 20 years of service at that point. Um, so there's three levels to this benefit. There's just a straight pension. Basically, it's to supplement a veteran's income because they fall under the income limits. Um, you have to be, or you have to be permanently and totally disabled. Um, housebound is another one. So housebound is if the veteran can do things on their own, but because of their medical condition, does not have to be service connected, but because of their medical conditions, they're pretty much confined to their home. Um, it's difficult for them to go out. Um, and then the last one is aid in attendance, and that's a big one, huge one. So what that is, is that the veteran needs assistance with at least two activities, sorry, I'm gonna shut my phone off. <laughs> um, at least two activities of daily living. So those are um, bathing or showering, dressing yourself, feeding yourself, going to the bathroom by yourself, 
or transferring. So going from your bed to your couch to the bathroom, all that stuff. You need somebody to help you with your mobility issues. So again, you have to meet at least two of those um, to, for you know every day to qualify for the aid and attendant. So what those amounts are for a veteran is just a regular veteran, and these are yearly amounts, and it, I don't wanna go into too much detail, it's confusing, but in a future class I will. So for a veteran alone, for just the pension, the yearly income limit that you have to fall under is $14,753, which comes out to be about $1,229 a month, gross income. Um, the housebound, your income limit is $18,029, which comes out to be about $1,500 a month. And again, that's this year. Every year these rates go up, these amounts go up. And then for the last one, aid and attendance for a veteran by themselves is $24,610, which comes out to be about $2,050 a month. And then I'm gonna just give you the amount for a veteran with one dependent, because I know there's a lot of couples in here. So pension, straight pension, is $19,320 a year. For housebound, it's $22,596 a year. And for aid and attendance, it's $29,175 a year. And I will just add to that, that those, um, your income that they count is an adjusted income because they will subtract some medi unreimbursed medical expenses. So if you're paying for a Medicare Part B premium, if you're paying for a Medicare supplement, if you're paying for a prescription plan, you're paying doctor co-pays, prescription co-pays, mileage to and from your doctor's appointments. They're gonna look at all of that and reduce your income limit and then calculate to see if that adjustable income falls below those limits. It's confusing, I'm gonna get into it again more on October 28th. I'm gonna actually try to have examples up there to show you what I'm talking about. Um, and then obviously you, you, this, if this is something that applies to you, you can always meet with me one on one and I'll try to explain it to you. What's his name again, Brian? What? Somebody had a question? Okay, no, no. Oh, that's him out there? Oh, thanks. Okay. Um, oh, or Frank. So I want to go next into survivor's pension. It works the same way as for veterans, but this is for the surviving spouses. Um, and the income limits are much, much lower than for the veteran alone. Um, or for the veteran. But the veteran that the spouse is getting the benefits based on still has to meet that wartime service requirement and discharge requirement, which is basically honorable or under honorable conditions, and it has the same three levels. So the income limits for a spouse, for just the pension for a spouse is $9,896 a year which is like $824 a month. So I'm telling you, it's like way lower. Mm -hmm. For housebound, it's $12,094 a year or $1,007 a month. And for aid and attendance, it's $15,816, which comes out to be about $1,318 a month. So it's way lower, um, but it's designed to help the spouse who is really low income or has mobility issues or uh, needs somebody to come in. And they will look at, if you're paying for a veteran as well, if you're paying a caregiver to come in and take care of you, they will look at that expense as well, uh, unless it's your spouse, because then it's household income. If a veteran's paying their spouse to be their caregiver, it's all considered household income, so it's kind of a wash. Um, questions about pension. I know it's a lot and it's confusing. No? All right. The last survivor benefit that I kind of want to go over again, and all of these are going to be covered in more detail. Survivor benefits will be on November 18th. That's the last of these sessions where I'm going to get much more in detail. So this one is called dependency and indemnity compensation. This is money, again, tax-free money every month. And the, the spouse's eligibility is based on the veteran's disability rating or 
whether or not the veteran died from a service-connected condition. So the two qualifying criteria, the two big ones, is that the veteran was rated 100% service-connected disabled for 10 years leading up to their death, and the, veteran, and the spouse was married to the veteran for at least one year. That spouse can get this benefit after the veteran's death. If they were married for eight years of that 10 years, then there's a higher amount that they're qualified for. The other one is that the veteran dies from a service-connected condition. So you served in Vietnam and you have prostate cancer or you have ischemic heart disease, also known as coronary artery disease, and that contributes to your passing, regardless of the length of time you have the disability, Regardless of the disability percentage, the spouse is also entitled to this dependency indemnity compensation. Um, so, let's see. So it is payable to the surviving spouse. It's also payable to any minor children um, or disabled dependent adult children, provided that the disability occurred before the child reached the age of 18. Um, or it's also available to, to parents uh, of these service, um, these veterans. The parent does have to fall below certain income limits to qualify for this benefit. So that's, that's the federal benefits. Uh, so about half an hour. Any questions about any of this stuff? Again, this is all gonna be gone over again in much greater detail in future sessions. Everybody still with me? You stand up and do jumping jacks? <laughs> <laughs> I know it's a, t it's a ton of information. Um, that's why I'm, I'm like trying to break it up into different sessions, because if I went over all of this in detail in one day, you guys would all walk out of here on me. Okay. Anybody need a break before we move on to the state benefits overview, or are we good to move on? Some of my friend might want to get coffee. You want coffee? I want coffee. Pastries? All right, so we're gonna move on. All right, so state benefits. So there's basically five state benefits in Massachusetts. I gotta tell you, Massachusetts takes care of its veterans, in my opinion, in my opinion. And I don't just say that because I'm a VSO in the state. <laughs> so the first one is the financial assistance program. It's called chapter 115 because that's the chapter number of the law that established this condition. They're trying to rebrand it because chapter 115 really doesn't mean anything to anybody. <laughs> Howie, it looks like you have a question in the back. Yes, why do you uh, have a booklet of everything we're talking about? A, bull a booklet made out of I do. information to give to every- I do have family. one, I do have one. The only problem right now is <laughs> Our copier at work does not do double-sided, and it's a lot of pages, so I'm hoping that we get our new copier soon and I can print those booklets out more. But I do have one, and it is available on my website, and I'll show you that after, okay? Um, all right, so property tax exemptions, that's another one that uh, the state offers. Disabled veteran annuity, um, welcome home bonuses, and the Registry of Motor Vehicles has some benefits as well. So I'm gonna briefly go over these, and then on November 4th, we'll go into more detail on a lot of these sessions. Is that working okay, Val? Yeah, All it's right. the extra microphone that's not working. Okay, so the Financial Assistance Program. This is, again, non-taxable monetary benefit for veterans and their eligible spouses or surviving spouses. So if the veteran passed away, the surviving spouse could still qualify for this benefit. Um, in fact, right now in Westport, we have about 34 people on this benefit, and I think 23 of them are surviving spouses. Um, so, it is, did you have a question in the back? I thought I saw a hand raised. No, okay. Um, so, it's administered by the veteran service officer in every community. So. I think for the most part, most of you in here live in Westport. I know one couple does not. Um, everybody else, you don't. Anybody else, West, everybody else is a Westport resident? Okay, so if you qualify for this program, you have to come see me. 
um, because it's paid by the community that you live in, and then the state reimburses that community 75% of what we pay out. And so this benefit, depending on where your income level falls and the calculation that we do, could assist you with helping your with your shelter costs, so your rent, your mortgage. If you don't have a mortgage, it doesn't matter. We can still help you with your property taxes, your homeowner's insurance. Um, there's, a, there's a calculation, so I can't give you a number and say this is the number. Um, and then it could also help you with your heating costs if you are paying for heating. Um, if you live in an apartment like Gillis Way where you don't pay for your own heat, then the heating one is off the table. And then the biggest one is your medical expenses. So what are you paying in premiums? What are you paying for co-pays, doctor visits, hospital visits, hearing aids, glasses, and dental. Those, those are the ones, that's probably the biggest benefit for, for a lot of the people. Um, so again, I will go more into detail. I have a whole presentation just on this one program. Regina, you have a question? Um, just a quick one, but I can wait till the end. Um, the assistance with like hearing aid glasses and yep. dental, is that still, you still have to meet the income? You do, okay. yes, That's fine. yes, unfortunately. That's okay. Um, so I will tell you, just as a general number, the income limit for a, whoops, I have it here. The income limit for a single recipient, it does not matter if it's the veteran or the surviving spouse, but the income limit right now is $2,265 a month, gross income. For a married couple, it's $3,052 a month. So that's, that, and that's a little bit of a flexible number um, because of the way the system works. We have what, what we call a spend down. I'm not gonna get into all of that. So if you're a little bit over that and you think you meet the asset requirements, which I'm gonna read next, you could still qualify potentially. So the asset limit, and this does not include your primary home if you own a home, for a single recipient is $8,400. And for a married couple, it's $16,600. Assets is what you have in the bank, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, CDs, basically anything that can be converted to cash. Um, like whole life insurance could be considered an asset, which is a whole, Thing that some of us VSOs don't like, but it is what it is. Um, <laughs> so again, I'm going to go over this in more detail. Um, we can, you know, again in, on November 4th. Um, and I do want to mention this last little part about this program um, is that if you are low income and you are without the means to pay for the funeral for a veteran or the veteran's spouse. The VA, the VA, this program can reimburse up to $4,000 of a funeral that costs no more than $5,000. <coughs> and that has to be the case. And I know that's not a lot of money, $5,000. Um, it's gonna be basically like a bare bones funeral, unfortunately. But if it's $5,001, the state is gonna say, nope, we are not reimbursing because they spent more than $5,000 on the cost of the funeral. Some funeral homes have worked with me in the past to try and get the prices down below this. Now I bring this up because this is the one benefit under this program that you do not have to be enrolled in receiving monthly benefits in order to get the burial benefit. But it is administered by the town or city that you live in when you pass away. Um, and you have to be low income. So you don't have life insurance. You don't have, um, the VA is not helping to pay what we talked about earlier. The VA is not helping to pay for the cost of the funeral. Or if they are, we have to offset that. Um, you don't have a ton of money in the bank. Um, so that's an option, even if you're not enrolled in this program. Any questions about this? I know I didn't give a whole lot of information, but any questions so far about this program? So the next one is property tax exemptions. So for this one, the veteran has to have a service-connected disability of at least 10% and own a home in order to qualify for this benefit. Um, so 
if you're between 10 and 90% here in West Fork, the, uh, the abatement or the exemption is $400 off of your property taxes. And if the veteran is 100% service connected, it's $1,000. There are some other ones um, if you need, especially adapted housing from the VA, um, if you've lost a limb, there's different amounts, but those are the two big ones that we, we do here in West Fork. Um, if, you, if the veteran passes away, this benefit does carry on to the surviving spouse, provided that she or he, because you could, could be a husband, does not remarry. Um, and then, going back to the service-connected death and the DIC that we talked about a little bit before, if the veteran dies from a service-connected disability, the, the surviving spouse is eligible for 100% property tax exemption. So they pay zero dollars in property taxes, and that's huge for some surviving spouses. Um, and you do have to reapply every single year. It's not a one and done type of a thing. So every year. So for those of you who live in Westport who are getting this benefit, um, the assessor's office usually fills out the green form partially and then sends it to you if you haven't gone into the town hall to do the form yet. They're gonna stop doing that and they're gonna send me the information and I'm gonna generate those forms. So next year, I'm gonna be calling you if, you if you're on my list and say, I have your property tax exemption form ready. You can come in and review it and sign it. If I have your signature digitally, you don't even have to come in. If, you, if nothing has changed, then I can just add your signature electronically and email it to the assessor's office. We're trying to make it easy on you guys. And two, two women work in the assessor's office that are handwriting all of those applications. I'm like, this is crazy. We have technology, why are we doing this? Um, so any questions so far about the property taxes? No, okay. So the next one is the disabled veteran annuity. You do have to be 100% service connected to get this annuity. You can't get it if you're 90, 80, 10, like me. Um, and you do obviously have to be a Massachusetts resident because it is a state benefit. And again, the service connected death, if you die from a service connected condition, this benefit does transfer to your surviving spouse, but it has to be a service connected death. Otherwise, the, the, the benefit goes away upon the veteran's death. Um, and if you're a parent of a service member who dies from a service-connected death, the parent is also entitled to this benefit. Um, this is a one and done. Once you apply, you don't have to keep applying. So you know, I'm gonna go into more of this, a little bit more, on November 4th. Um, okay. The next, bon the next state benefit is welcome home bonuses. So, you have to have lived in Massachusetts for at least the six months leading up to when you enlisted in the military or were commissioned if you were an officer. Um, and you have to have received an honorable discharge. So, the qualifying periods of service is World War II. Do we have any World War II veterans in here? Lewis, yay. All right, um, Korea, how about Korean veterans in here? Claude, okay, and I'm sorry, what was your name again? What's your name? Quinn. Quinn, Walter, Walter Quinn, right? right. So we have two vet, two Korean veterans in here. Oh, I'm Korean. Um, how about Vietnam? I know we got Vietnam in here. Korea. Lots Korea. of Vietnam veterans in here, all right? And then Persian Gulf? What are you, Tony? Post 9-11? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm Persian Gulf veteran, by the way. Um, and then post 9-11, also known as Global War on Terror. So those are the qualifying periods that you could receive a welcome home bonus. For World War II, Korea, Vietnam, the state was trying to pay you automatically. If you have a question about whether or not you received that bonus, you can come see me. I can reach out to the state and find out. Um, and if not, well, I, I will help you with the application. I just did one for a, a veteran the other day. Um, online. You guys heard anything? Not yet? Okay. Um, and then new, what they've recently added, is if you served in the National Guard 
um, during the last two years, two and a half years during COVID, and you were activated in support of COVID, I don't think this applies to anybody in here, but they are paying bonuses for those National Guardsmen who were activated. And then the new one also is the Armed Forces Expeditionary Medal. So if you received that medal during any, any period that's not one of these others on here, then you can get a bonus as well. All of these, with the exception of the post 9-11, is a one-time bonus. The post 9-11 is based on um, if you have <coughs> excuse me, um, one deployment or multiple deployments, they will pay subsequent bonuses for multiple deployments. Questions about this? Excuse me while I have a sip of water, coffee. All right, so the last state benefit um, is the, from the registry. So if you, if you are a veteran, you can have the word veteran printed right on your driver's license or ID card. Um, what's that good for? Basically showing that you're a veteran for military discounts, right? Or you can get a license plate. There's, these are all different license plates. So Bronze Star recipients, Silver Star recipients, Purple Heart recipients, Legion of Valor, Distinguished Flying Cross, Medal of Honor. So if you received any of those awards, you can get a license plate that has that you know, specific ribbon on your, it will show on your license plate. If you were a POW, you can get a license plate that identifies you as such. And I don't think we have any of these, but Pearl Harbor survivor as well. Unfortunately, I don't, I don't know how many Pearl Harbor survivors we have left. Um, you can also get just a veteran license plate that has either an American flag and it says veteran, or you can get a sticker with the particular branch of service that you served in. If you go outside and you see the red Jeep parked right out the door, that's mine with the Marine Corps sticker on it. You can see what one looks like. Um, and then you can also get, if you qualify, you can get a disabled veteran plate. Um, I would just say, again, I'm gonna go over this more on November 4th, but I will just say for the disabled veteran plate, there are qualifying criteria. One is that you have to be at least 60% service connected and your service connected injury has to be, it has to qualify you for a disability. You can't walk more than 200 feet without resting. You have breathing issues. You have certain cardiac issues. Um, you're blind which obviously if you're blind, you're not driving, but whoever is driving that car could have the disabled veteran plate. Um, there are additional benefits that go along with having a disabled veteran plate, um, certain exemptions on fees, uh, but again, we'll cover all that on November 4th. I don't want to give it away. All right, state benefits. Any questions? No? No questions? Are you just like, your mind is just like blown right now because it's too much information? No, you're explaining it. No, you're well. explaining it. Oh. Well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, thank you. All right, so some miscellaneous benefits. So if you live in Westport, these are what I'm gonna go over. If you live in Westport, one of the very first things I did when I became VSO is, I, so I started this job April 1st, 2019. On Veterans Day 2019, we unveiled veteran parking at the Town Hall and the Town Hall Annex. So if you have to go to either of those buildings, look for that sign and you can park there. So um, this is where it is, right? On the, on the, at the Town Hall, it's on the north side of the building, the Lee side, probably about six spaces up from the street. And if you go to the Annex, how many of you are familiar with the Annex? So when you, when you pull in the parking lot, there's like the building here, there's the handicap parking over here. Just in front of that, there's one kind of spot that's off by itself right near the grassy area. That's the veteran parking spot. Um, so you do have to have something on or in your car that identifies you as being a veteran so your car doesn't get towed. Not that we towed any, but we could. So either a veteran license plate or 
If you don't have a veteran license plate, and I will say, if you do decide to get that, it is a $100 registration for two years. The additional money does go to help fund the two soldiers' homes in Massachusetts. That's why it's more money. If you don't have a veteran's plate, I made these placards that identify you as being a veteran, and you just put this on your dashboard, and nothing will happen to your car. So for the people that I knew were going to be here today and have not already gotten this from me, I did, print, uh, I did make some for you. For those of you who did not know you were going to be here, I'm sorry, I didn't know, so I didn't bring any but you can come and get it from me if you want one. So I have Tony DaCosta. Oh, 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 I'm sorry, one question. Uh, yes. Not just in, at the annex now. Can that be in some, any place where it says veterans only park and you could put that out there? On I mean, you could. Yeah, you Lowe's could. Do that, I guess, right? Lowe's, Home Depot, you could. I mean, this is not anything official other than here. Oh, I know. I understand. But yes. yeah, you absolutely could. So is Tony DaCosta here? How about Randall Pomeroy? No, I did not see his name. Um, let's see. Uh, Ed Machado is not here. Walk the quiz. I saw you. Here you go, young man. I'm sorry. Uh, You're welcome. Somewhere. Uh, he's not here. I, th I think. I have to get going. I'm sorry. Okay, okay. Sunny okay. Hank. That'll be in touch. So, again, if you want one of these, just give me a call. It's easy, easy, easy for me to make up. Um, and then you just put it on your dashboard. All right, so other no. benefits. Oh. So the VA does issue a VA ID card. This is what it looks like right here um, with your picture, your name, and then the logo of your branch of service. So this can, this can be used in place of your state issued driver's license that has veteran on it. I don't know if you can see right here where it says veteran. So you can use that in place of your driver's license or your DD-214, right? So why do you want to do that? Well, number one, you don't want to carry your DD-214 around oh, with you no, no, no. because it's got too much identifying information on it that somebody gets a hold of that, they can steal your identity. They can have your date of birth, your social security number, where you were born, what was your home of record. There's all kinds of information. And you know, you, you can use it in place of your driver's license too, because when you go to a store and you show your driver's license, you might not want them to see where you live or what your date of birth is or any of the other information that's on there. So this is a way that the VA came up with to, um, for, to allow veterans to have something as proof of service that doesn't have all this other identifying information. And you can be a reservist or in the National Guard, as well as active duty to qualify for this. But your discharge has to be honorable or under honorable conditions only. So, how do you get one of these cards? It's not, it's not terribly easy, but I can do it. Um, so you do have to have a computer or come through me. You can only apply online, unfortunately. They don't have a physical office where you can go and get this card. And you need to have a login to one of those three websites. So id.me, login.gov, or myhealthyvet. So it's basically you're going to log in to the VA's website through one of those websites that's already verified your identity, and then get the card that way. You also do need to have an email address. And I, if you come through me, ideally, you have a smartphone that you can either get, you, well you have to be able to get your email on it, and ideally text messages, although in lieu of a text message, they can call you, because basically like throughout the process, it's gonna send you a six digit code, like I don't know, three or four times, it's kind of crazy. They, they made it so complicated, I, I wish they'd make it a simpler process. Um, you also need to upload a digital file of your DD-214, a headshot, basically like from chest to head. Um, they don't want any hats on, ideally. They wanna be able to see your face clearly. And then the front and back of your ID card. So your driver's license, your passport, which wouldn't be the back, but the front of your passport. Um, so that's why 
I've done this for a lot of veterans in town. As long as you have that login, which I can help you to get, and the phone, the smartphone, I can do this with you. Um, and they do have two versions of the card. They have a hard copy card, like kind of like a credit card size and, and the like whatever the material, plastic. Um, or you can get a digital card now. This is something new um, where basically they email you a picture of what the card looks like. And you just keep it on your phone, in your, in your photos on your phone. And then you can show that. Um, or you can get both if you want. And you just choose that when you're applying for the card. Um, any questions about the ID card? Anybody think they might want to? Maureen, I don't know if you can get it as a surviving spouse, if that was your question. No, I have a military oh, right, yeah. yeah. No, my neighbor is a surviving spouse. Okay. And her bank is on the list. Okay. And her husband was, he was in the Air Force. Mm -hmm. he, um, and uh, he also worked on federal contracts. Because I know she got said that. Is okay. she eligible for some kind of ID that you get her on the base to go to the Federal Navy Credit Union? Um, did her husband die from a service-connected condition? Or was he 100%? Was he retired? Or retired military? I don't know the answer to that. Because no. I have an ID to get on base. Yeah. How long, how long were they married? Not, just not disabled. Yeah. She could get an ID. She needs to go to the Navy base up there and well, get an ID. What did you say, Karen? I asked how long she was married, and she said forever. I said she could get on the base <laughs> and get one. But you got to get on the base. Yeah, you got to get on the base, right? So generally, so you, for a you, bring, you go with her. You got a, a car. You go with her, yeah. bring her to the base, and then she can go get an ID. I just did it for this woman. Okay, I got so mine. You, yeah. you can get it. So I just got mine renewed last year at the Navy base. Okay. Yeah, they have a new time. one. Because I had, I needed my old ID card to get on base. Mm -hmm. And I covered up that it was expired. Yeah, yeah, they, they, they did expire before, and now they have a brand new card, and it like has a chip a chip in it, right? You might want to call ahead. Yeah, call ahead, ahead, yeah. Call ahead. Like marriage certificate, birth certificate. I have to call the Navy card. All that, there's a list there that you need to put with you. Right. Yeah. Um, okay, any other questions, Claude? No, what about if your friends are uh, too dumb to have a smartphone? <laughs> website 
the Town of Westport Veterans Services website, I do have a link or, or a page that I try to keep it current, but sometimes policies change, um, that has the retailers, national and local, that offer year-round, or I just basically do Veterans Day, because that's the big one. Um, so if you know of anything that's, that's not on there, let me know. Michelle. I stopped at um, Smoky Bones on County Street or whatever. You know, I was 140 and I came off. I'm oh, like yeah, yeah. In Taunton. And um, that TGIF offers a yeah, discount. So I asked them, and I got a discount. Yeah. So ask, ask if you're a veteran. Yeah. The, yeah. the shoe store, the uh, famous footwear. Yeah. The shoe store gets 15%. Mm -hmm. Also, I mean, BJ's. What do you think about a shoe store? BJ's? BJ's. I went in there and bought a whole bunch of, we take, go take in, um, stuff up to the building two at the, every month we take um, snacks and stuff up to them. And um, I had bought <laughs> more than I thought. Anyways, I asked for the manager. She gave me a gift card to apply to what I had spent and told me that from then on to go in and ask for, and I think the lady's name was Louise for some reason, but to ask and to, you have to have a letterhead from, like, with me, it's a, um American Legion post mostly, but one of your organizations. Oh, that's like a tax exempt yeah. yeah. But they will give you a, a discount. They have money every month, a proportion of it, right. to who comes in first with the paperwork that says, I need like seven pairs of this or seven pairs right. of that, or, and you can get it. So, but so. you have to ask. They're not, yeah. I don't know of anybody that says, oh, we give a discount. So. <laughs> Any crafters in here? Anybody do crafts? Oh, crafters. Michael's, I think, is 15%. I'm always using yeah, a Michael's discount. Yeah. Always. Uh, all right. So, again, check my website. I can bring it up <coughs> later and show you if you want. Um, but, again, you do have to ask. Um, all right. So, I don't know how many of you know this, but starting on January 1st, 2020, if you have a, a service-connected disability, regardless of your percentage, and I put on here zero to 90, only because if you were 100%, you already had this privilege, this expanded it to service-connected disabled veterans who are less than 100%. Um, so you can take your VA healthcare ID card or your service-connected letter that you get from the VA every year in June-ish, um, and you can go to the base, and you can shop at the exchange or the commissary. Um, or you can also be a Purple Heart recipient or a former POW, um, or if you are a, um, an approved VA caregiver through, uh, for one of the veterans in this category. Or retired. Or, or, right, so retired, 100% already had this, this, this uh, uh, benefit. So this is new, these are the new categories of people who can go on the base and go shopping. Um, if you bring your spouse, your spouse does have to have a real ID, from what I was told, the one with the star on the top. Um, that's what I was told, yeah, again. Not until May, isn't it next May? 23rd. 23rd. That's for flying in federal and, and that, I think it's so, May 23. Yeah, so when I was putting this stuff, um, when this first came out in 2020, this was pre-COVID, so COVID obviously extended right. deadlines for everything, right. uh, even including getting the real ID. Um, so you might not have to have it right now, but you will soon. Um, they don't check the ID of anybody in the car with you. Really? No. Because so that Never. might just be new for. Uh, oh, right. Right. Yeah, that might just be new yeah, for. But I'm I'm going by what the official policy is, right? Obviously, every th there's always ex exceptions to every rule. Like some bases yeah. don't follow the policy to the letter. Um, so. Again, that's what they say, is that the spouse can go, they will do a really like quick, from what I was told, a really quick background check, and I think it's like a six month pass they might give you. That's what I've heard, but again, I don't know if that's true or not. So, but check into it if there's something you're interested in. Um, and then I did want to mention that the MWR, Morale, Welfare, Recreation, some of the facilities that are available on the different bases are also now available to veterans in these categories. Um, two of them that I know 
can't even find it. I went past it. Um, two of them are the Shades of Green. If you've heard of that, it's in Orlando. It's a resort. And um, the Halikoa Hotel in Oahu, Hawaii, which I am <laughs> hopefully going to in about 18 months. Um, <laughs> so those are, those are two of the military resorts that are now available for veterans in these categories. Before it was, you had to be active reserve or 100% or retired. Um, so now it's opened up to other veterans. Um, I will say, and I don't know if Newport is different, but again, this is the official policy. If you go and you use a debit or a credit card, they charge a surcharge. Uh, if you, they do prefer cash or check and there is no additional surcharge. And I have read recently that starting October 1st, commissaries are gonna be 100% funded by the government. So they're ideally gonna drop their prices by about 25% is what I read. So that might be a pretty substantial savings, even if you have to drive to Newport. Um, let's see. I think that's all for that. Um, okay, and then back in November of 2017, they opened up online exchange access to anybody who is a veteran. Um, so you basically go on and you create an account you show your veteran status, and then you can shop online at the exchanges. Um, and I do have coming up resources that has the links. Um, it does not grant you base access if you don't qualify based on the previous slide. And it is tax-free shopping. Right? So if you're going and you're buying a $300 TV, you're not paying sales tax on that or whatever else is taxable. Um, and I, some of the stuff I read that they do free shipping as well if you have orders over a certain amount of money. Um, and then they also offer like a military uh, credit card that you can get that also will give you free shopping, um, free shipping, <laughs> free shop. I wish yeah. it was free shopping. <laughs> yeah, I want, I want free shopping. <laughs> yeah, um, so you can go to this website on here. I did, if you signed up for this class, I emailed you these slides. These are links that you can click on. Um, you can check your eligibility. Um, if not, you have the printout. You can just type it in your web browser and check your eligibility. Um, okay. And then the last benefit that I want to talk about is National Parks Access. So as of Veterans Day 2020, the government said if you are a veteran or a Gold Star family member, you can get a, a lifetime pass to the national parks for free. So if there's a, a national park that normally charges an admission fee, you can get in for free. Um, and what I read yesterday is that um, you can go, if it's like per car load, everybody in the car gets in for free. And if it's per person, you can bring in three additional adults in addition to the veteran for free. Four so four people, including the veteran. Um, so you can get a lifetime pass. If you do it online, you do have to pay a $10 processing fee one time. Or if you go in person to any of the locations, um, you can get a pass for free. Um, so I printed out, it's not included in your packet, but I'll tell you. Um, so I printed out the, the national park places in Massachusetts where you can go and get a pass for free. Um, there's Adams National Park in Quincy, Boston National Historic Park in Boston, Buffumville Lake in Charleston, Cape Cod National Seashore in Easton, which is a, like a seasonal place, it's not open year round. Green, um, not green, Great Meadows National Wildlife Refuge in Sudbury, Knightville Dam <coughs> in Huntington, Lowell National Historic Park in Lowell, Minuteman National Historic Park in Concord, New Bedford, Whalen Ooh. National Historic Park in New Bedford. I did That's the one. Well, yeah. Well, we, my military card, but it's a free reserve. <laughs> yeah, you might be able to just show your card as well. Yeah, you can show your, your VA health care card, your VA ID card, your state license that says veteran on it. You don't have to get a national pass, but if you want to, this is where you can get it locally. Um, 
There's one in Newburyport, Springfield, and Oxbridge as well. So the big one for us would be New Bedford. Um, okay, so these are just some of the resources for the federal benefits, um, the state benefits, and the miscellaneous benefits. Questions? Marie. Yeah, I have a question. You were just saying that you brought in the Wait, I, what? You brought in the GA Cloud and the Wind Museum. Yep. Now, that's just for the veteran getting it free, not the spouse. So, no. Well, so in, what they're supposed to do My is the, the veteran and three additional adults no. with the veteran. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Well, you can get the National Park Pass over a certain age. You can get that. Yeah, if you're over a certain it's age, ten you can get it as well. Lifetime. Yeah, but I'm dealing with veterans. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. It used to be like if you bought something in New Hampshire when there was no state tax taken, that you were supposed to report that yourself to Massachusetts. Yeah. <laughs> would that yeah. be the case? Is this on the line military thing? No. No, I mean, I would say no because it's, it's a benefit that's for veterans. So if, you, if you're shopping on base, you don't pay taxes and you don't have to report it. Okay. So, yeah. Supposed to use the operative word there. Any other questions? Really? All this information? <laughs> You're doing a good job. <laughs> well, that's my presentation this morning. Thank you. login to the login.gov website. So you create an account on login.gov and that's what you would use to log into the VA's website and other federal agencies as well. Like I know Social Security is one of them too. Um, but yeah, that's what they're supposed to be doing is changing that over. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Oh, oh. Thank you, Claude. Yeah. Yeah. Thank we you. I had a couple friend of mine in Pittsburgh, Mass. He was a Vietnam veteran. Okay. He died. They never married. Mm -hmm. She ended up with COVID in the hospital. And he laid in limbo for two years. Wow. Because his girlfriend's sister didn't want to pay for his funeral and cremation and all that. So she's and not we obligated went, we, to. Honey, is there something to do? Because we went through heck. Finally, the Veterans Administration stepped in. Yeah. It took care of everything. Yeah. It took two years of us hassling them and everything. Yeah. So, I mean, if, if he's if he was a Massachusetts resident, they yeah. could have gone to the VSO in that community, and under the Chapter 115 program, they could have paid four thousand dollars towards a five thousand dollar or less funeral. Yeah, we didn't yeah. know that at right. the time, but yeah. I think that's what happened. Yeah, and, and that's unfortunate. But I know if, if it's a, an unclaimed veteran, the VA will pay unclaimed. like three hundred dollars, which is nothing, right? Veteran. It's not even it's not even gonna cover a cremation, yeah. unfortunately. But yeah, well, at least I'm glad that you know they, they stepped in and covered it. Veteran, no. What's that? <laughs> unclaimed veteran, nobody wants. It, I mean, it's sad, but if you yeah. if you have if you're not married, you have no children, or you're estranged from your children, and and you know, your parents are gone, you have no siblings, or, I mean, it, unfortunately it happens. Yeah. It happens Not far more frequently than, <coughs> yeah. Anybody else? Did everybody think this was worthwhile? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, very much. Um, again, if you, if you are not already signed up for any of the future classes, and you want to sign up, I do have a sheet here, or even if you are and you want to add to, to some of the additional ones, Please sign up. Next week will be burial benefits. So I will be talking more about what are the um, allowances that the VA will pay, what is the eligibility criteria um, for Beach Grove Cemetery, what is the eligibility criteria for that. Um, a, lot of, a lot of information, lots of good information. <laughs>